Welcome back to Hamilton. The battles continue on track between the Kiwis and the Aussies. A pair of Kiwis battling here for position. Graham Byrne and Jeff Spencer. And Peter Robb, actually, three Kiwis up ahead of them in the number 68. So battles right through this field. Can the Kiwis win the honours for the Trans-Tasman Test Series over the Aussies? I think we should stop this race right now, Mark, because I think they've done enough to do it. I think they have, yeah. Look, at the end of the day, no matter what happens, we won it, because it would have been, if we hadn't done this, we should have won it. I think we should, even if we do lose it, I think we should come up with a way of winning it. Oh, the Aussies are cheating, aren't they? Let's be honest. Let's not go there. <laughs> so a three-way Kiwi battle here. Rocket Man, Peter Robb. Jeff Spitz Spencer, and look at the lead that Pith has got here over Kim Jane. Jane thought he had something for Pitha in this race because he alluded to uh, making a, a small mistake with set up with their tyres. The tyres went away with about four laps left to go at the end of race number two. Yeah, but I don't think he's got anything here for Chris Pitha right now. The Kiwis look to be in the box seat for the Trans-Tasman Challenge. I have to agree. Oh, this is actually a surprise. Look, there's no doubt Chris has the car speed, but I thought Kim Jane would have the consistency to stay with him as well. But you alluded to it at the beginning of the program. Here we go. He's going to give him a hit. Corkery yeah. having a run here with Kovacs. Good battle, this, actually. I don't know that uh, there'll be a hit now, but it may be coming. I don't think so. Look, Kovacs is just defensive. He knows how to drive these cars. He's done, what, 250 starts in the news. He knows when to be defensive. He knows when to get out of the way. Corkery. And maybe not quite. Down the inside. <laughs> They're going to be side by side off the exit on the run down the three. But Kovac. I think... Yeah, Kovac still got the preferred line. And he had great exit speed on it. And I think that's the advantage that the VE Commodore has got over the other cars. More, more importantly, the Fords for the Ford Vans. You're right, and you've got to look at it. And if we can stay on the snapshot, because we saw it early in race two, every time that VE Commodore gets on the power, it just pulls three or four car lengths. And that's just the, the gap that he's looking for. Over the back of the circuit, though, Corkery is all over the back of the number one Wilson security Holden. But nearly 250 starts in V8 Utes. He was there back in the beginning in 2001, the 10th year this year out of Australia. That's a staggering number. And, and talking to Charlie, he'd only missed a couple of rounds in that time. I think he's actually saying he might have only missed two races, and that's probably due to um, accident damage. And there's a replay. This is Spence locking oh, up. She's gone a lot. Started that a long way back. And it's still going and going. Now, if he just hit reverse now, we'd be back in his t uh, pit in the support paddock. Just about. He wouldn't be too far away. Good recovery there. He, uh, he managed to keep it off the tyre stacks because they're fairly comprehensive stacked up going back into that runoff area. There's a good reason for this because if you have a look at that board in the background, it shows you the speed. And if something happens, you won't be able to stop before you get to the main road in Hamilton. Yeah, I think we were seeing speeds of up over 195 kilometres now from the V8 Utes on this part of the track. Under brakes. On board with Kovacs, and you can see there the gap. Corkery not able to stay with him under out of a straight line, but he's got a big advantage under brakes. Uh, under brakes, especially that mid corner to the exit, is where he carries the speed. It's just the final part of the equation which is coming off where that VE Commodore has the uh, legs on it. I had the call from the, the organisers behind the NZVAU series and the Australians. What they're really happy about is, is the parity. Identical top speeds between Pitha and Jane in two very different cars. One a Ford, one a Holden, and obviously the Holden is the later model VE. So that's got to be good for the class across. And, and we're seeing here that Kovex has got the advantage out of the turns, but in the in the in the tighter stuff, the Fords sort of come back into their own. It does, and that's the difference between two two ways, two categories approach parity. He's got to decide it right. We're going to do it on lap times. We don't care if one car's a bit quicker or a bit slower, so long as the overall lap times between Ford and Holden, and then Holden and Ford in their respective different models, is the same. Now supercars, their parity is both cars have to be the same from one end to the other. Here's a replay, this is George Elliott. Oh, what do you do? Left, right, he goes straight well, over the top. He straight over the top. Of now, that, it, that's a unique yeah. way of doing it, but he's left some debris down there on the track. Okay, now, when these guys hit this debris, they hit in the wrong spot, like right now, it's going to be like hitting ice. Oh, oh Jeff saw that. Spence went straight over the top of it, but he got it off the track. That was a good job. He does. Look at the Spence car right now. Look at the thing go sideways. It's because when he's hit it, one wheel's driving, the other one's on something slippery. Huggy Urquhart going through here at first. He's up into the 12th position from a rear start. He started right back at the tail of the field in the Big Ben Pies wild card. V Holden on board with Jarvis chasing down Corkery. Handlebars is just up ahead. Corkery with a couple of dabs on the brakes just to make sure he's got something heading down towards the corner as they're oh, lapping. Oh, 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 oh. Kovacs! Obviously he didn't dab the brakes. No, he probably should have done. So take a bit of a lesson from Corkery there, but... 
that's what we've been alluding to. Unfortunately, these things, they just, they're racing them 11 tenths every corner of every lap. And when you want the brakes to be under you, every now and then they're not, and that is exactly what happens. Somewhat ironic, he's sponsored by Big Brakes Australia, <laughs> or should I not go there? No, let's not go Here's there. Here's a replay. Oh, he come from a long way back too. He was lapping the 88 Millet car, and he was never, ever going to make that corner. No, you're right. And what you can allude to and confirm that as brake fade is you'll see there's absolutely no tyre smoke. There's no wheels locking because there's just not the residual brake pressure in the system to make him lock up. Well, he rejoins, but he's lost some position, so that's going to gain spots for Corkery and Rob Jarvis. There's Chris Pither. Couple to go, less than a couple to go now, and he's got a big lead over Kim Jane, the doctor, Chris Pither. Lots of V8U experience on both sides of the Tasman. Go, Chris, go for the Kiwis. Go, boy, go. Isn't it a good thing seeing the flying Kiwi out front? Well, there's daylight behind him to second. It, apparently, there's an Australian back there, but I, I, oh, oh, there he is. There is yeah. That yellow car in the background somewhere. So Chris Pither takes the last lap board, one to go. We go back to Robert Jarvis chasing down Corkery. Take a ride here with the BBC Racing Ford. Now, this is James Urquhart and two. Spence again. I think Spence is trying to take up a new, well, uh, new sport of drifting. Peter Robb's <laughs> doing it as well. It's flying off the car's left row. Sorry if the youth's left, right and centre here. He's got Graham Vernon behind him, senior Werner. So a group of Kiwis here running together. And is this Spence in the background? Again, have another attempt at this? He's gone down the inside this time. Made it stick. The 21 of Jeff Kernahan. Dingo running for the Australians. We've got David Kernahan running for the Kiwis. The Kiwi's looking good here. James Urquhart's got a little bit of smoke trailing from the back of the Big Ben Pies entry. And he's got someone else's <laughs> rear bumper as Burns done the touch and go. Trying to line Peter Robb up on the straight. Lots of smoke there from Urquhart. It's yeah, a bit that... of a patchwork quilt, that car. It's got various bits from other race cars on it. It's going to be a good gaggle on the final lap because these guys are taking speed out of each other. So this is look at the guys in the pit lane here. Way Urging in. them on. Come on, guys. One lap to go. What Those we two do? guys have been doing that all weekend as Byrne gives them another touch-up. And at the other end of the track, out of the final sequence of corners, it will be the Dr. Chris Bither for the Kiwis to take out the honours for the Trans-Tasman Test Series finale. So three out of three, but more importantly, 2-1 to the Kiwis. Debris flag out. There's debris. It turns one, two, <laughs> two three. three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And it's out of turn number eight. Chris Pither will win the Trans-Tasman Test Series for the Kiwis and the individual honours. He takes over the mantle from Charlie Kovacs. Kim Jane a fighting second, but it wasn't enough for the Australians. Simon Junior Berner will finish in the set, a third position in the McDonald's Ford. He's got to be pretty happy with his weekend. He hasn't raced all year. This is the battle yeah. we were watching before oh, the finish. Oh, he's just taken the chicane out. He's got into the concrete. Don't keep reversing, James, whatever you do. You can ask yourself the question. Four corners to go. Why? Well, well, it's ended in tears. He's not taking too much home that started the weekend on that ute. But you've got to say, Huggy, he's been entertaining. Chris Pither takes out the final race for the Trans-Tasman Test Series for the V8 Utes. Takes out the individual honours overall as well from Kim Jane, Simon Byrne, Colin Corkery. And those not having such a good run towards the end of the field, the likes of James Urquhart and Jeff Spencer and Warren Minnett. Entertaining stuff from the V8 Utes from Hamilton.